It is certainly good to see everyone. I see a, a big number who were here last night. Good to have you back. Maybe some new ones too, I'm sure. It's good to have you as well. And um, we'll go ahead and get started and, and people will continue to join and that's, and that's fine. I um, wanted to give, start out by just giving you a little overview of, of this virtual camp. And uh, we, you know, unfortunately now with this has been two years, we've not been able to have camp in person, which has been um, anywhere from disappointing to traumatic, depending on which one of us uh, answers the question. Um, you know, we, we, as much as anything, want to have this to just to connect with folks in the ways that we can this year. And um, so we um, started working uh, as we have a committee of Jeanette DePoy, Lauren Bott, <clears throat> Jonathan Smith, and myself, and we started talking about how could we do a virtual camp? I mean, camp is about being together, isn't it? And uh, so we came up with the idea of trying to do some live Zoom classes. And it's, it's really an experiment to see if, if how, it, how it might can work. And uh, we, ran, we really enjoyed Lauren's class last night and look forward to tonight's class. But we also um, have accumulated over the years uh, just a treasure trove of recordings, some videos, some only audio of classes that, that we've had going all the way back to our first, first year. So we thought it would be fun and uh, to also produce some, some videos, audio video from that. And we've able, we'll have at least one of those and more uh, uh, each day. So um, if you look at the schedule for this week, we'll have a live class tomorrow afternoon, that's at three Eastern time. Um, and feel free to join in. That will be Helen Brown teaching leading from Darby, England. Um, and then we will also have uh, our YouTube uh, historic class that we'll post. Uh, generally speaking, if we're having a live Zoom class like tonight, we will post the YouTube uh, class that goes with it during this session or about, at about this time. Now on Thursday, Saturday and Sunday, we will not have any live Zoom classes. <clears throat> so our goal is to post the YouTube videos, <clears throat> pardon me, uh, at about 10 a.m. Eastern time uh, on those days. So you should be able to go to, to the YouTube channel and, and view those starting at 10 a.m. on those days upcoming. So uh, again, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, and I can't help, but just for some of you have been to, many of you have been to camp, but many of you may have not. Just to give you a little quick background, a few numbers. We've had 33 camp fossil laws before this one, all in person, starting in 2003. Uh, five of those were in the first years combined. Then we have, we've had 12 youth, 12 adult camps, and four Europe camps. And all of that, we've had a total attendance through those years of 3,228 campers. So uh, hopefully, um, hopefully 2022, we'll be back together. We will see, won't we? So uh, again, thank you for being here tonight. We're going to uh, start off uh, well, this class is going to be on King Music in Sacred Heart. This, uh, this practice or this, what I call, I think it's an art, not a science, of, of, of King the Music, something that is one of the most important uh, things uh, and contributions to a successful singing. You may have been to singings before where you were sort of challenged to find someone with enough experience um, to key the music. And it's, uh, it's a difficult thing for a singer. Um, when we've had these in person, I've asked uh, the question at the beginning of the class, usually, why are you here? What, what is it that you're 
wanting to get out of this. And that would also help direct me in the class. And that's harder to do with, with this format, I think, but we're up to 69 folks. So, but I think I know what your answers would be because the answers I've been getting in the past have, have been very, very similar. And quite often, <clears throat> well, let me say what, I've never had anyone answer, I want to learn the key so I can be rich and famous. I've never had anyone, you know, have that idea, you know, and even though you, you, you would think uh, that there would be someone, but no one wants to do this so they can be rich and famous. Usually it's out of a need. It's out of a need from your local community. And you uh, might be thinking in case so-and-so can't be there who often does key the music, maybe I could learn something so we could, I could key and we could have the singing. Um, or you may be thinking, I'd love to start a singing at a local singing here in my community, but I have, we don't, I don't know what we would do for someone to key. Historically, back through the years, going back to when I was uh, growing up, communities, for the most part, Sacred Heart communities, had generally a person, and usually a man in those days, always was, in fact, who was the person who keyed the music for their singings. And they might do that for 30 or 40 years. And the folks in those communities, when they would go away from their singing, say, if they went 20 miles or 30 miles to a different singing, that singing or that convention might have their person to key the music. And generally they would key all day, key all the songs all, all day. And so uh, well, you might imagine that, that folks really loved their own key person, right? The person who keyed their music. They, they always thought they were the best. And if you went to another singing, and if you drove 100 miles and you just have to, oh, I don't know about this person, but they were comfortable with. And quite often uh, that would get handed down to someone uh, who might have wanted it or might not have wanted it. And that's what happened to me. I had never thought or, or prepared in any way, really, to key music other than going to singings. I hadn't really thought much about it. I'd never heard of a class on keying until we started Camp Fossil Live, actually. And my great uncle, Leonard Lacey, who had been keying music at Liberty and Henniger, uh, throughout my memory, which goes back to the early 60s, Oh, was getting of an age where he had a hard time continuing that. And at one of our conventions, uh, my dad and some others, the older gentleman, just said, you're going you're gonna to key the music. Sat me down on the front row. I was scared to death. And, um, and I should have been because I have a recording to prove how unprepared I was, actually, from one of those first times. So... All of that to say, a lot of this is out of necessity. And I'll give you one other little thing about Uncle Leonard, who was just a, did a very good job. And I, I really, uh, when I think about how did I learn, I learned from him. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. But he was in this role because his older brother and had been killed in an automobile accident, was hit by a train back in the 50s. Uncle Leonard, same trouble. But when when that happened, when his brother, who was apparently really, really good, I did not know him, was no longer there. He had been killed. Uncle Leonard stepped into that role. So you may have this in your community, but what we have right now, we have in the throughout Sacred Heart singings and conventions throughout the country and, and, um, and everywhere it's sung, Europe and Australia, is we really have nowadays a lot more people who can key music. And that is a very good thing for, for all of us, for our, for our communities. Um, and so um, now let's sort of talk about some thoughts about what you can do if you're interested in keying, or if you're just, let's want to get better. Maybe you, you do something. So, um, you know, one of the things, if I ask any, all of you 
some way to indicate, have you ever keyed a sacred harp song? And probably a fair number of you would say, no, I have never keyed a sacred harp song. I don't want to do that. I've never. Well, I would then ask you, have you ever sung a sacred harp song by yourself? In the shower or wherever, of course you have many, many times. So think how many songs you've keyed. It's, it's really that in some ways that basic. This can be a very basic topic. And we'll talk just some about some of those basics here tonight. But it can also, there are lots of nuances too. And there are lots of fun things to talk about. And I like to talk about this. And there are things that, you know, you can get into that, that get into how one might do it at a different time of day and all of those types of things. But let's just talk, let's just stick with the basics. So I, I believe that uh, you really almost have to learn to key yourself. And what I mean by that is the best way to learn, the way to learn for me is by listening listening, listening. When you're at a convention, when you're at your singing, when you're listening to audio tapes you might have or whatever you're, quite often in a lot of our recordings for a number of years now, the key is recorded and you can hear the person giving the key and then hear, listen to that for that song and concentrate, how did you hear? And then whether you're listening to a recording, which hopefully is good and, and was keyed well, or in a singing you're attending. At the end of the song, think, did that sound good? And try to remember how that key, that sound was given. And from that, you and, th and there are different ways to look at the key signature that that the song is written in and and have that in your head so you have to be getting to your page just like the person keying the music and doing these things to help you and this is a very important way for you to start if you're starting and it's a very important thing to do if you're experienced to keep doing i'm still learning how to key. And I've been trying to do this about 40 years. And I'm still learning by listening. I'll hear something. I think, gosh, I wish I had been keying that song in that way for the last 30 years. I like that. That's better. And I'll try to change. So um, listen and know that you can do it. I'm going to try to get where I can share a screen here in a second. Um, so before I, before I move on to that, let me give one other bit of encouragement. And, and, and one of the important things is you're preparing to learn to key is to make sure before you even think about learning to key that you can sing the scales frontward, backward, major and minor scales, and know those intervals uh, without doubt. You've got to know that if you cannot go up and down the scales and, and, and work intervals, then you need to keep concentrating on that, as we heard last night in Lauren's class. And if you looked at, at the video that was posted last night on Rudiments, uh, that, and I just very, really enjoyed that, Jonathan. Thank you for producing that. And Lauren, I know you and Jonathan collaborated to do that. But to hear Jeff Shepard uh, repeat multiple times just in that one video that the most important thing about singing schools is to learn your scale, learn your intervals. That's what singing is. You know, all these other things we talk about and do are wonderful and fun. But until you do that, I've actually, and, and this is hard to believe maybe for you, I've heard people key music and sound the multiple notes, sound the triad, 
And if they were all, and of course, they're singing, you know, one of those notes at a time. But if they're all, they were all put together, they sung it. They sounded a discord. So it's hard to know what note to start at if you know. So that's why that's that's so important. And that's very unusual, by the way. Uh, but I have heard it, and and you think, oh, um, all right, let's see. Give this a try, Jonathan. So you should have a big fossil Camp Fossil Law um, logo there, I think, but not staying there very long, I hope. Okay, whenever I teach a singing school or and do anything, I always, I believe in in consulting the rudiments on any topic, whatever it is. I like to just go to see what. So. To show you how rich the, uh, the rudiments are, uh, though in terms of how to key, look at the sen sentence, single sentence I have circled here on page 17 of your rudiments. This is all, all that the rudiment says about keying music. Sacred heart music should be pitched so that all singers can reach their parts comfortably. That's all it says. Um, is that enough? Um, well, we'll see. And then there's another sentence there about this not here, which is this gets to the point that we that we use relative pitch, don't we? As we've talked about yesterday. So, um, what are we doing? And when we talk about keying the music, what is the with the very basics? As I said early, earlier, what are we doing? You know, we have. Uh, as Lauren taught last night, she taught the major scale, she taught the minor scale. Uh, you know, these are shown here in, in, in either side in three different keys, given C major, F major, and G, if you see on the left, A, D, and E on the right. And of course, our songs then are constructed by the writers from the notes on these scales, right? And they have to decide, our writers have, de have decided uh, where, what key to put these in. And here, if you look at Liverpool, a song we know all know very well, um, this was written in the key of F, as you see there. Uh, it might could have been put in G, perhaps. Uh, same thing for Esther at, at the top. Um, so that's fine. That's fine and good. Why? So you might ask, why do you not use some type of tuning fork or some other type of instrument uh, to do this? Uh, well, it would just be awful. I, I mean, I don't know. I've never been to a, a singing that I can remember. There have been some that did use um, a, a a pitch pipe. And I have seen a couple of people before get up to lead key their own song and use a pitch pipe to do that. But it's just not the tradition that we that we do. And of course, when this person I did see used the pitch pipe to get get uh, to help him get the pitch, he was not for Liverpool. He almost certainly wouldn't have keyed it in with the pitch pipe F. He almost certainly would not have done it. He chose something else that he thought would work and sounded to give himself the pitch. So, um, so then getting back to oh, the king of this, what is what are we really trying to do? We're trying to give these first notes to get the song started. Very simple. Just like if you're singing in the shower, singing in your car, you know the song you want to sing, Liverpool, you start singing. How many times, I bet you, I've, I've, many times I've started and had to start and rekey the song myself. I didn't key it, but I started again at a different higher or lower pitch. So um, what's, I want to point out and emphasize what is so important here when you're looking at and, 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 and working on keying is work from the tonic. What is the tonic? This is from the 1859 rudiments that I have highlighted here. And, and those rudiments are very cool in that they ask questions and give answers. Why is the keynote or tonic numbered number one? And you might hear those 
both things. And again, in, in, in Liverpool, which we see, see here, it's an F major. And that means, and uh, so the starting note here for the tenor is F and for the bass is F and the others are the third and the fifth. So uh, why is the keynote or tonic numbered one? Because it is the sound most natural to the voice and determines the principal pitch of every piece of music and from which all other sounds in composition are reckoned. It is therefore made a station holding the first and most important position in music. A regular bass always ends with, hence in giving the pitch of a piece of music, it should be sounded. It should, it, it has to be sounded. I will even say it must be sounded. And uh, it doesn't have to be sounded first, even though I prefer that, but it must be sounded when the, when the key is given. So um, one of the things I, I'd like to point out here is in our book, these are the quantities of psalms in these different keys for you to look at. And they're not all distributed um, all that evenly, actually. If you look in the major line, 129 of the songs are in F. That's probably more. I haven't added this up. That's about the same number as in, our, or in the B, C, D, and E combined. And in minor, if you look, it's, it's similar, more in, more, or in E in minor, and then a fair number in F, and you know, fewer. And then A has a fair number. So what this might suggest to you is that if you can learn to key something, songs in F, you have a pretty good start, don't you? in terms of the quantity. <clears throat> and then, um, so, so let's talk about how could you learn to key something in F. What are some ways to do that? And, and, and some, when, when we talk about keying, people will, we use terms some, sometimes like, um, it's the sound, I hear that in my head, maybe, right? It's the same. I hear this, I can hear it in my head. But, and then a lot of times people, especially when they're starting, they find it, they find it useful to um, hear a song, how a particular song starts. And in my case, Liverpool is a perfect one for me. Now, I'm a tenor singer, so I'm starting on that tonic note. When, whenever, uh, so I've sung that a lot of times, of course, as you probably have. So you can almost hear that in your head. And for Liverpool, hear that fa, fa, so, la, so. And I can be pretty confident I can get that. And I bet you can too. Mm -hmm. I bet you can too. So if you can, if you can work that, and you, it may take some practice, and you know, then, though not perfectly, because that, that won't work for all things right now, but it'll work for just about all. You could use it for present joys. And, and that's just what I'm thinking of right here. So then you could really have, you have a chance to conquer a good number, just if you, yeah, and then by the way, if I can sound that fa, in Liverpool, for an F, la, I can just as well say la, can I? La. And then, I might be able to key 39 minor teams, just like that. What's that number? That's 168, just like that. Well, what do you say then? Well, that's there's the more other. Well, if you know, if if if, if you once you believe you have that, then if I could take that liver, even if I didn't know Corinth, 
if I could take that Liverpool sound in my, in my ear and raise it a step, then I would have that starting note for Corinth. Fa, la, so, fa, fa, la, so, so. So just by raising that stuff. Let's go up a little bit, sorry. Going back here. You get 75 more there. And thing, I can put a law with the same. If, so if I learn that, then I could start and key 10 minor songs. Same thing, the same idea if you go down a step from F to E. So, you know, I put in here, Newtopia. If you just drop that down a lot, it's, that's, a, that's a minor one. I think we had, you could, uh, same thing here with the stress on the bottom of 32. La, la, fa, la. <clears throat> that might be a little high. La, la, fa, la. La, 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 so, 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 la, la. And now, how many do you have, guys? 59 minor, and add 41 to that. So uh, this is got to, I'm having to do this class fast, but uh, so we can go on to, to the key and game. But what I'm, what I'm just trying to point out to you, if you, once you work, just start somewhere. Start somewhere. You might not want to start with, you know, those songs I gave you as examples, but start somewhere. Um, you know, one of the things we have to realize, and I'm, uh, and, and how I learned this and how I learned to hear things might be totally different than you. So being a tenor singer, I sort of have a mid-range voice. So I have a better ear memory for those songs in, you know, that usually where the tenor usually starts and where it runs. But if you're a bass singer, you know, you might develop a different way of, of learning some of these landmark keys that, that you could use. Same thing if you're a higher singer. A lot of I hear folks and they will really start. And, and reach up very high and come down, that's fine. Just find what, what works for you. But what you're trying to do in, as you get through this again, is sound the tonic, be able to sound the tonic note and give the other parts their pitches if possible. If you cannot do anything else when you're keying, you've got to at least sound the tonic note. Some singings I go to, the, the person keying the music, I'll hear them, and they'll sound that tonic, and the other parts will hear it, and they'll get their own, and they don't even have to help them. But usually in your small singings, folks are going to need you give them those other, those other sounds so they know to start. So um, let's see. That's really the basics of what I have here. Let me see if I have any one other, I'll, I'll go down through, um, you know, what I've explained here, again, will work for most songs. But we do have songs in our book that probably should have been written in other keys than what they're in. And you just have to learn what those are and adjust to it. Here is a list of, um, break this off. Here's a list of, and I'd usually put up in the keying class where we have more time and say, here's two, here are two groups of songs. Tell me something, tell me what you think these are. Why do I have these groups and these sets that I have them here? Well, uh, I'm just going to give you the answer tonight because so we can get on. But what I found is a lot of, that if these, these songs listed in the top are very are quite often keyed too high. They're easy to key too high. And it's just, you know, and so once you get into this, uh, once you start practicing keying and learning and you get into this, you'll start re recognizing these sorts of things. And the ones on the bottom set are the opposite. These are quite often uh, keyed too low. If you just go by maybe one of these, uh, songs like Liverpool and apply it 
you know, once you have one of those for each key, and a lot, that's a good thing to try, then it's quite easy to key these bottom ones too low for various reasons, I think. And as I said before, I'm still trying to learn to key better after doing this for a, about 40 years, something like that. And, uh, and I'm still, uh, I'm not sure I'm getting better, by the way, but I'm at least learning uh, to try to do certain songs a little bit differently than I might have done them for 20 years. So I don't know if there are any questions come through the chat or anything like that. Jonathan, you can tell me if there's something I need to look at. Um, otherwise, I've used uh, 30 minutes of our time tonight here. Um, now I, I feel like I need to ask if there are any questions, if you can, and I'll take one or two, but I do want to get on to Jillian's part of the part of the evening. Someone would like you to comment on major and minor in the chat. I I think I think they were guessing that your lists were major and minor, but they're not. Oh. No, they weren't. They weren't. So you know the main thing in terms of keying major and minor, and sometimes I think uh, it can it might some people and we and I was I mean I'm intimidated to key the minor song some you know at one point. And you might think, well, I think I could key this major. But again, if you if you approach this by learning how to how to sound the tonic, it's this going to be the it's the same sound. What is different then are the intervals you're giving generally for the starting notes for the parts, right? That's that's what's different. So, and that's what gets back to my one of my early points know your scales, know your intervals, so that when you give them all, you nail them. Because that's what the parts are depending on to start. And you want the first, you want the first chord to be a concord, not a discord. David, one of the questions in the, uh, one of the comments in the uh, chat was that uh, we thought that the Key, the placement of the notes on the staff had to do with where it would fit for printing mm -hmm. more than what key. How does that relate to what you said about keying? Because it's confusing me. Well, I mean, th there is something to that, that, that a key may be selected to minimize ledger notes you know, at one time, but it also, you know, it wouldn't make sense to to put something in a key that had lots of, if you, if you look at, if you just thumb through your thumb through your book and observe what's on the pages, almost all the notes are in the braces, aren't they? Oh. <laughs> well, yeah, that's done, uh, obviously, definitely for printing, but the writers chose these keys because we can, you know, pretty much each part, what we range, how much an octave plus a couple of notes, you know, in tenor and treble and bass and alto less. And that's what about what people's voices can, normal people can, can sort of do. That's about what I can do. So, um, yeah, they, I mean, so I think there are different reasons that the keys are selected that the songs are written in. And therefore, most of these rules that I'm uh, advocating for here is, is the, the simple one. If you can learn to key Liverpool, which is an F, then you can learn, then you, that'll apply to most other songs in F. Maybe not all, but, but most. Okay, well, I really have enjoyed Talking to, I do uh, like to do this with a lot more questions, but uh, at this point, Jillian, I want to turn it over to you and let's have fun. Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. The keying game is not a class, it's a game. And huge disclaimers. Um, I've picked songs 
and picked recordings that um, I thought were good representations of those keys, keeping in mind that there are variations of keys across regions and times of day and all kinds of things. So, you know, if you want to key a song in this game today and, you know, your offered key is not that close to the key that's chosen, that's okay. This is a game. It's kind of a representation, if that makes sense. Okay. So the keying game began one couple of years ago. I was driving to a singing somewhere and I had been asked to key a session at that singing. And I was like, oh no, what am I going to do? So on the way there, um, I have a car that's got a display screen. So on the way to this singing, I put some Sacred Harp on. And when the, the number of the song would appear on the screen, I would hit pause. And then I would try to key it from memory. And then I would hit play and see how close I was. And the answers were either yay or oh. So from there, I graduated to give myself points. Points are meaningless, completely arbitrary, but it's fun. It's fun to get points. And then sometimes I play with other people in the car. And then it's even more fun to get points. <laughs> Again, they don't mean anything, but they're just fun to have. And then um, during COVID, I've been playing the keen game over Zoom. Um, with Facebook people and with, you know, with single friends and um, all kinds of things. So it's just, it's really fun to do. Now, typically when we play the keying game, I pick a singing and we just go through it because that's what happens when you're keying in a singing, like you don't really get a choice. Whatever the person has called is what you have to keep. But to be a little gentler and kinder to us all, I've picked some songs um, and I have three categories. I have songs that are fairly reliable. Then I have songs that are maybe a little less reliable. And then I have songs that I would call challenging. Um, and so if anybody would like to try keying a song, let me know if you want reliable, not so reliable, or challenging. Try to key it for all of us. And then I'll play for you the song that I've chosen to be an OK representation of that particular key. OK? Clear? All right. Uh, safety first. Only do it in the car if you're either with somebody else or if you have a screen. <laughs> and uh, if you're driving, don't use your book. <laughs> okay. Who would like to try to key a song? Somebody raise your hand or shout it out. I'm going to call on somebody then. I'll key a song. Fantastic. Cheryl, do you want reliable, less reliable, or challenging? Uh, less reliable. Okay, so how about uh, 163 on the bottom? All right, let me turn to my page here. Ah, China. Okay. Okay. I don't know. What do you think? Okay. Ready? Got it in your head? Everybody here, Cheryl's key. One more time. Okay, ready? Where is it? Can you hear it or no? No. Sorry, just a sound. Pardon? Are you sharing your sound? I am sharing. I am sharing my sound. Do you want to send anyone else something and we could try and play it if you can send us a link to something sorry everybody i was ready i really was i was all set up to go i have my sound shared just a second Cheryl, just keep singing it in your head just keep singing it i can sing the whole thing <laughs> okay, I think I got it now. Okay. Uh, 
Can you hear it now? Very good job. Yay, you get like 100 points for that. Fantastic. We sang that this was the favorite song of uh, a singer who died years ago, Christine Cox in Cincinnati. We sang it every singing. And so to uh, me, it's very familiar. Good, good. Well, congratulations. And thank you for being brave and starting out. And uh, you get the first round of points. Congratulations. <laughs> Um, so that's the key game. That's how we play it. It's really fun. So who would like to key next? Somebody can be brave. I hear someone. Now, come on, people. There's like 90 people online. <laughs> Elaine, would you like to try one? Yes, Colleen, would you like to try one? Yeah. Yes, she says yes, perfect. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> can do I like... get a reliable one? <laughs> yes, you can get reliable. Um, let's try 155. 155, oh, I know that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so fa la so la fa so. All right. Do you want any feedback? Does anybody have any opinions about Please that one? Or should we just feedback. listen to it? She wants feedback. Also, keep in mind, I have a little bit of a cold, so. <laughs> All part of the game. Okay, does anybody have feedback? Too high for the bases. Too high for the bases? Is that what I heard? I, I think that's what I heard, yeah, Peter. All right, let's hear your key again. I think it was, fa, is that right? Fa, la, so, la, fa. No, this is where you were. Fa la fa. fa. All right, hey, ready? I, I'm bad at keeping the pitch. <laughs> Remembering. <laughs> well, we have we have Barrett here who can remember everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Okay, what was it again, Barrett? What was Colleen's key? Fa so fa. Okay, ready? Fa so fa. give you 75 points for that. Congratulations. <laughs> so when I listen, when I play the key game by myself or with other people, I like to listen to the notes just enough to hear like a key, um, uh, that's not the wrong word, an important, an important phrase or an important note um, to know how close I was. Okay. All right. Who's next? Barrett's next, says Robin. <laughs> There's a reason why that wouldn't be fair, and I'll and I won't say why, but somebody else. How about um should I call on people? Yes, no. Peter says no. Somebody else says yes. Uh David and Andy are saying yes. How do I choose example I recordings? For yes. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to give uh, Andy a challenging one because he said, yes, I should pick people. All right, ready? Andy, I want you to key 433. <laughs> okay, okay, that's what I get. 
He's going to use his 433. Book. This would be my 433. Now, Andy, look at the song and tell, walk us through your process. Okay. This is McKay, SM Denson oh, Tune, 1988, early Denson Tune. Uh, this is notorious for a very high treble part in relation yeah. to the other parts. The other parts are fairly well within their range, I think. Um, but the treble part, if you notice all those notes with ledger lines above the staff, right? And so um, instead of doing A minor, I might bump this down a little bit to a key that I would use for like 328 maybe, which is I think G minor. I might think about a key like that for this one. Um, also, odd opening chord. The tonic is in the bass. A, this is A minor. Tonic's in the bass. Um, the the ten. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So the tenor note is below the bass note, right? Am I right about that? I think. Yeah. And, yep. and the the alto note is on the um, third. The uh, treble note is, is would be high normally, except it goes much higher. Uh, La fa la fa la la fa la fa la la. So here, how low that tenor opening note is. La sounds like it's going to just be horrible through the whole thing. But you key that if you know, you can't be afraid to hear that opening note really low because it's going to get really high. I don't know if that's the right key or not, but la fa la fa la la. All right. So does everybody see why I put that one in the challenging column? <laughs> Yes. Here we go. Ready? That's, that's definitely worth 100 points. And extra points, if anybody here knows who that was keying, not Barrett. Barrett, I know you know. Richard Ivey. Richard Ivey, that's right. <laughs> who I think just came into the Zoom room. Yes, like. he did. That's why I brought it up. <laughs> Applause, yay. Oh. Ooh, 433 points, says Lydia. That's a good idea. Andy, you get 433 points for that one. <laughs> All right. Who's next? Who would like to key something? Don't be shy. This is a safe, fun activity. Lydia, you want to try one? <laughs> Why do you got to call me out like that? <laughs> um, yeah, I will. I'm not very confident at this, but I'll give it a, sh I'll give it a shot. It's, it's all right. Do you want you know, reliable? My problem with keying is that it takes my voice a really long time to warm up. Um, uh-huh. I find that hard and it gets so much like higher at the end of the day that my keys tend to be high at the end of the day, but I will mm -hmm. try. Perfect. Well, you know what? I don't have a book, but I can look it up. Okay. So do you want a uh, reliable or less reliable or challenging? I'll go for challenging. Okay. I guess. Um, <laughs> all right. Perfect. We would like you to try uh, 212. Ooh, okay. Let me get it. Oh, pull up here. Interesting. Okay. Nope, that's too high. I think. Um, yeah, it's too high. Way too high. And what are we going to listen for? What's the, what's the important piece of this that's going to let us know if we have the right key or not? The alto note. Yes, exactly. Here we go.
points. Congratulations, that was great. Thanks. You're welcome. See, see how wonderful it is, everybody? Don't be shy, don't be scared. How many points do I get? <laughs> Pardon me? How many points do I get? Uh, 60, I don't know, 65, 100, 165, okay, 212, that. how about that? <laughs> like I said, ooh, 500, says somebody in the chat. Like I said, points are totally arbitrary, but they're just fun to have. So who's next? Somebody, somebody, somebody. Um, I'll try one. Fantastic. Uh, reliable, less reliable or challenging? Um, I'll go with challenging. Okay, uh, 57. Okay, do you want to hear it right away or do you want to discuss it? Uh, We're going to hear it right away. <laughs> I think that was really good. And I'm going to give you uh, 375 points for that. Right Congratulations. On. Right on, in fact. Right on, says Barrett. OK. So does everybody see why this is fun? <laughs> Who'd like to go next? Is David Ivy still here? David, I should challenge you to win. Oh, that's hard. Put me on the spot. I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, I want you to key 442. Oh, okay. That one scares me to death. I, well, I picked it for you. <laughs> <clears throat> so, scares me to death. So, okay. La, 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 la. All right, ready? Do you want any feedback or should we just do it? Happy for feedback or to do it. David wants feedback. Anybody? Barrett, Lauren. I've heard David. you. I've heard you key it much higher than that before. And it sounds yeah, it's probably cool. low. Want to hear why it scares you to death? I, I know. I do too. I don't know. It's. I've just always found it hard to key. You know, the treble runs uh, and has some high notes, but but I think it probably could be keyed higher. We'll, we'll see. Uh, that's what you did, la la. Want to try again, David, or do you want to just hear what we got? No, let's just go. Let's hear what okay. you got. Many points, David. That was great. <laughs> so you don't need to be scared anymore. <laughs> uh, okay. 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 Who's next? Who would like to try something? There's lots of reliable ones that are, you know, less scary. I'll give it a go. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, reliable or? No, no, no. Let's go all in. All the way. Okay. Yeah. 507. Oh boy. <laughs> Fa la so la pa. All right. 
right? You ready to hear it? Yes. Okay, here we go. points that was great that was that was like very right on to that singing congratulations <laughs> who would like to do something else got lots more choices we have about maybe time for one more song so somebody work up all your courage and do it i'll do it <gasps> okay so I've been talking on the chat maybe i can talk on the <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, reliable, less reliable, or challenging? Uh, oh, reliable. Reliable. I just got that much courage. Haven't done um, this in a long time. <laughs> okay. 171. 171. I'm getting there. I'm really getting there. Take your time. Uh, Okay, do you want to hear it right away or do you want to discuss a little bit? Well, I almost always pitch one note short, the low. So we'll see if I'm one note low today. Okay. All right, got it? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Yep, one note low. <laughs> Still, you get lots of really good points for number one being brave and number two, it's been a long time and it was very, very close. So lots of points to you too. Congratulations. <laughs> 1,111 points, says Lydia. You're definitely the winner. <laughs> So uh, that's about it. It's just two minutes to six. Um, that was Sive, keep seeing that, um, Tom. Uh, any questions? I have a question. Yes. This is Laura. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm kind of new to shape note singing. And, uh -huh. and this, I'm wondering though, like if I just um, happen to key some notes and they just happen to be like, um, you know, sharps or flats, you know, instead of real, I mean, the real note that I pick, does everyone just, we just go on that? Or did you really need to try to sing a solid uh, either note as written or, you know, is it, I, I'm, I'm not very sure how to ask this question, but I feel like I might start off with a sharp as the tonic, just cause I'm, you know, perhaps not very musical. Is that, is that all right? Or do you need to kind of have a, you have to have a, a solid, whatever the you know the regular note you don't want to be giving people starting off on a sharp or something does that make sense oh, yes and uh the shape note singing is sung, in, is sung in relative pitch so oftentimes the the key that's written on the page has little to do with what we're actually singing so um david was reading in the rudiments earlier about how um David, what does it say in the rudiments it should be keyed in a place where it's comfortable for everybody and that's kind of all it really says about it so um you know, the, there's huge variation in what any song might sound like in various parts of the world or various times of day and depending on who's keying. So it really just has to work for the class that you're in. If, does that help? Sure, lots, lot, lots more leeway, that's great. Yes, lots of leeway. <laughs> Can I make one quick general recommendation and comment? Yes. Anyone here is looking for recordings to listen to? to uh, kind of get a better idea of what, what a really good key can sound like and how a class can receive that really well, go and find a CD called In Sweetest Union Joy. It is a, a CD that was recorded in 1999 um, at Liberty Baptist Church in Hanover, Alabama, where people like David and relatives of mine have, grown, have sung for many, many years. And I think that told me that you told the producers of that CD to leave the key 
and the page number in the track. So it's that's really, exactly right. Yeah, really good. And they did. And I'm really happy they did. Yeah. I have one a young guy asking me and asking me says, "Hey, I want you to help me learn how to key." So I gave him his first assignment about a month or two ago, and I told him to get in Swedish Union Join and go through that recording all the songs with the book learn and listen to those and start practicing from that that's the best first step i could give him to start to start learning the title is in sweetest union join yep. and i agree the first time i heard it i was like swedish union what like i couldn't really understand what people were saying but it's in sweetest union join it's a great recording and uh sam i think do you want to say something Yes, please. Uh, I remember Jeff Shepard at a key in class or a workshop he was conducting at camp a long time ago. And he said, if you, if there's something that's not quite right about the key that's given about the pitch that's given out there for the class, there are two people who can offer an opinion on that key. One is the leader and the other is the person who keyed the song. Everybody else is just supposed to live with it. Yes. And you know, the question is really, is it singable, right? If it's if it's singable, we'll probably just keep going. Um, uh, anything else? This was really fun. I love playing the keen game. Uh, if anybody wants to play, shoot me a message. I'll happily play with you at any point. And I have regular, fairly regular. Uh, you know, semi-monthly, I guess, keying games on out on Facebook. If you want to play, you're very welcome. It's really fun. And you walk away with points. Who doesn't like points? <laughs> okay, I guess uh, we're done. Yeah. Something else coming up next, Jonathan? This is the last live thing we have tonight, uh, but you can uh, now listen to, view, the Arranging Committee class by Linton Ballinger that was taught in 2009 at camp. It's now posted on the YouTube channel. And uh, Jonathan posted that tomorrow's class <laughs> is 8 Eastern, but there, there, I think that needs to be corrected. Tomorrow's right, class great. Wednesday is 3 o'clock Eastern. 3 o'clock Eastern on leading tomorrow. And the Zoom recordings will be talk. posted. Oh. When we're yeah. talking about times, the Thursday has no time listed at all. Yeah. And so people have been asking. Yeah. So Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday are asynchronous or their Zoom classes only. So we will post those to the YouTube channel at 10 Eastern time, 10 a.m. Eastern time. But there are no Zoom sessions to, so therefore no times other than you can view these at, after 10 Eastern on Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. And give us your comments if you want, if you'd like to do that uh, in the chat here um, or, or uh, any other way that, that you can reach us. Camp.org, you can reach us also. Now we're getting conflicts that tomorrow's not 10 a.m., it's 3 p.m. for the Zoom. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's correct on Wednesday. Wednesday is 3 p.m. Okay. Eastern time. Thursday, uh, though, we'll post the YouTube lessons at 10 a.m. Eastern time and also Saturday and Sunday. Helen Brown, the instructor of MERV, is from, is, will be Zooming from the UK. So that's the difference in the time. And Martha Beverly has a question. David, are the videos going to be up all week? The videos will be up. Um, we hope forever. So okay. we'll, Thank we'll you. see. And someone asked about the a replay of the Zoom sessions, and we will have those on the YouTube channel as well as we're able to post them. Lawrence from last night is already available. Where do we get our T-shirts? <laughs> T-shirts. Lauren? Uh, <laughs> I'm running out, people. I'm running out of T-shirts. He wears one every day. <laughs> I count on it. Lauren, we need new fashion. <laughs> yeah. I used All right. to have hundreds of them. <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah, but they're not this year. What? No, that's right. Yeah, but 
don't we all have to wear the same color on the same day? Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. Thanks, everybody. Lovely to see you all. And Great we'll talk again you. soon. Love you, Jane. Thank you, David. Thank you, Jillian. Thank you for joining, guys. Appreciate it. Bye, y'all.